Hello everybody. I'm delighted to be here um, for this important conference. Uh, I want to talk about a program called Healthy Minds, which is a uh, life skills curriculum for children aged 11 to 15. It lasts all four years uh, and it's uh, an hour a week. Now the, the program is based on three basic principles. The first one is that for a subject as difficult as this, you simply can't rely on inspired teachers. You've got to make it possible for average teachers to teach this, this subject using well evidence based uh, materials that have been trialled properly in randomised trials. Uh, and also, of course, the teachers have got to be trained to use these materials. Uh, this is nothing uh, derogatory to teachers. This is exactly what happens in surgery. Uh, surgeons are trained to use uh, the state-of-the-art procedures. So one reason of, that we came to this conclusion uh, was that in Britain we'd had a programme called SEAL, uh, Social and Emotional Aspects of Learning, um, in uh, around about 2007-8, which was found to have, in a proper evaluation, absolutely no effect uh, on emotional learning, on pro-social behaviour or on academic performance. Uh, and the researchers uh, came to the conclusion that this was because it was not sufficiently uh, well-structured uh, and not sufficiently manualised. Uh, so that is the principle that we're going on to offer something that's really well-structured, really interesting, uh, really motivating to children and, of course, uh, to teachers and involves teacher training, which SEAL didn't. So here's the second principle, that for a thing as important as this, it must be at least an hour a week throughout the school life. Uh, this is like... Uh, this is a skill we're talking about, uh, like playing a musical instrument. It requires constant practice. Aristotle, of course, was very good on this, uh, that living well has got to be a practised habit. Uh, and so uh, what we need for children is that they're constantly reminded of the basic principles by seeing how, year after year, they can be applied to a whole variety of issues that they are uh, currently interested in at that particular age. The third principle uh, is that teaching has got to focus uh, on what you should do rather than what you shouldn't do. There's so much evidence uh, that courses on healthy living which focus on the perils of drugs, food, drink, gambling, unprotected sex have little or no effect. To get children not to do these things we've got to offer them something uh, much more worthwhile uh, which they can do. So healthier minds uh, covers the following topics in these weekly lessons over the four years. Uh, first is social and emotional learning, uh, which includes obviously personal resilience and pro-social behaviour, uh, sex and relationships, healthy living, mental illness, media awareness, uh, parenting, and the practice of mindfulness, which is done uh, throughout the sequence of these lessons. To find suitable materials for these topics, we searched the world for modules which had been tested in properly controlled trials, and we then put them together in a structured way, and uh, we uh, had to, of course, modify them in places and commission one or two new sections. But most of the material had already been th through a successful trial. Uh, and, and, of course, all of these modules are, are heavily based in positive psychology. And so that gave us the materials. The other key element was the training of the teachers to deliver the curriculum. Uh, before teaching each year of the course, the teachers had roughly five days of training from people well-trained in positive psychology, for example, with a master's in applied positive psychology from uh, University of Pennsylvania. So here's the design of the trial. 33 state schools randomly assigned into one of two groups. Uh, group 1 started teaching the course to the cohort of children who were 11 in year T. Group 2 started teaching the course to the cohort of children who were 11 in year T plus 1. But these Group 2 schools also recorded the progress 
of the cohort of children who were 11 in year T. So it was those children uh, who were not taught the course um, uh, who provided the control group, both for the children uh, in group one schools <coughs> um, in, this, in, this, in the same age cohort and for the subsequent cohort of children in the group two schools. So here are the main results. Uh, the primary outcome was life satisfaction. And at the end of the four-year course, uh, this was higher uh, on average by 0.25 standard deviations for those who took the course. So the effect size was 0.25, which I think for a universal intervention is quite satisfactory, particularly in light of what I'm just about to say, which is that the people who gained most were the people who started off uh, with the worst levels of life satisfaction, um, even after uh, allowing for regression to the mean. So uh, we were uh, having a programme that in particular helped the people who needed help, but shouldn't be targeted because uh, that produces stigma. And also some of the effects on everybody are from the, the, the climate uh, which that generates in the school. Uh, we haven't got the academic results yet. Um, those will be interesting. But using the life satisfaction, uh, one can compute the cost effectiveness of this course compared with treatment as usual. Um, and it's remarkably cost effective uh, in terms of quality adjusted life years or qualies. Uh, the cost per quality uh, of this course is only £1,000 compared with the 25000 or so uh, which is used for the NHS. So that's very encouraging. Uh, as we say, prevention is better than cure. So let's go for that. The other hugely encouraging result was that the schools um, which uh, implemented the course just went on doing it for all the other children in subsequent waves. Uh, a great vote of confidence. So in Britain, we've now got a good situation uh, because the government have made uh, what they call relationship, sex and health education compulsory. But they haven't said how it's to be taught or for how long. Uh, here is the void which we hope our course will be filling in Britain. But also we think that looking around the world, we've not been able to see anything of equivalent uh, scale or rigour for this age group. And we hope that it will also uh, spread to other countries. So if there's any of you here who are, are interested um, in either uh, reading more about it or implementing it in, in schools you're responsible for, um, please go to the following website, bounceforward.com. One word, bounceforward.com. And there you'll find um, go, uh, and links to how to implement the course, uh, and of course, uh, where to find the research uh, about it. Uh, so I really uh, recommend the course to you, and I really hope some of you um, will take it up and spread it. Thank you very much.